A huge welcome to all of you who are joining us for Battersea Rise Carols. What a year it's been, but we're so glad that we can join together to celebrate the truth that there is light in the darkness this Christmas time. A little bit later on in our service, we're going to have an opportunity to give together. And our Christmas appeal this year is going to the work of International Justice Mission, and particularly for their work amongst those who've been tricked, trafficked, and sold into slavery and exploitation in South Asia. All of the information on how to give is gonna come up during our Carol Silent Night, and particularly information about Cashy's story that will give you a little bit more insight into the work that IJM are doing. And all the work of this charity is inspired by the one this whole season is about. So let's celebrate together. Battersea Rise Carols is here and we're so glad you're joining us if you're near or far out this year. It's no secret, at times it's felt dark, but there is light in the darkness and deep hope will he impart. There was a star one night. Three wise guys were led to a stable where a baby had no crib for a bed. The baby was a king and his parents were not wed. He was the savior of the world and for us his blood shed. His love displayed continuously from burning stars in the skies to complex galaxies. At times this year may not have made sense, but one thing I have to tell you, for you his love is immense. Although this service is a little different to most, Jesus is here and it's in him we will boast. So today we'll sing carols and hear of the light in the dark. Welcome to our Christmas service. Here, come, let's embark. joyful 
Isaiah 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. stars are brightly shining. It is the land of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and John 1, 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. 
in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Christianity was a part of growing up for me. I went to church when I was a kid, now and then. Jesus didn't really have an effect on my life and um, that carried on until I was about 23. By that time I was an athlete and um, everything I did was performance based. Uh, whether I felt good or bad about myself was down to how I performed. Well, my mum was going on and on, on at me to go to Alpha. And uh, one day I did and I was living with a girlfriend at the time and we both went together. We got to St. Mark's and we entered this room. I remember coming in late and everyone was sitting there. It was, uh, it, it was really welcoming as soon as I came in. It wasn't at all like what I thought it would be. It was just, it was a group of people sitting down and um, questions being asked and everyone having a turn to, to think and to be able to talk about how they, what they thought about life. I remember having, one week we had the Bible in our hand and I was just reading and I was realizing I don't understand that everything you say is uh, for my sake and for people around me. I just thought it was, I guess I just thought it was kind of religious in a t type of way of, uh, these are the rules, follow this and then you're good. And uh, realizing that God really isn't that person that I've uh, imagined him to be, but a person who actually cares, an actual person who loves, who loves me, who loves the people he just loves. That's, I realised that's who he is. And that just changed everything for me. It wasn't a force, like, it wasn't like power gripping me and telling me, you must do this, you must follow this, you must be that. It was, it was absolute freedom. With my relationship with God, we just uh, became much deeper because I realised who he was, that he loved me. My advice for anyone thinking about going to Alpha is just give it a try. Like, You've got, you've got nothing to lose, really. Let's give it a try.
It is Christmas time. It is the most wonderful time of the year. I love this time of year. My favorite day is the 24th of December. Um, I love it. I love the fact that you can just go and stand outside people's houses and look at all the Christmas decorations. It'd be weird if it wasn't for the Christmas decorations, but it's the one time of the year we're allowed to stand outside people's houses and it not be an unusual thing to do. I love tradition. I wonder if you've got a Christmas tradition. I wonder if you've got a tradition in general. Do you have something that you just have to do because it's tradition? Like a family roast that you do on a Sunday maybe, or you just, for me, it's sitting in the exact same spot on the tube every week. It's my tradition. Another tradition that I have is going to Albert Bridge. I love Albert Bridge. I love how magical it is. I love the lights. I'll go once a week. I'll take my snap for the gram and then I'll go hang out there, soak up the atmosphere, have a little people watch, and then I'll go to McDonald's and get some chicken nuggets on the way home. Love it. That's one of my traditions because I actually have a low key obsession with Victoria and Albert. Love it. I love that London was basically built on their love. We've got landmarks, we've got theatres, we've got museums, we've got art galleries, we've got venues, all with their name on it. And when I was there a few weeks ago, I was thinking, can you imagine loving someone so much that you named a bridge after them? Can you imagine loving someone so much that actually that becomes a landmark of other people's love stories? And when I was there, I was driving a few weeks ago and I was thinking, actually, there's another landmark of love. There's another bridge. There's a bridge that actually would have crossed the divide that two places would have never usually met if it wasn't for the bridge. And it's another bridge that's also lit up in lights. In fact, it's the light of the world connecting other people to the Father, and it's called Jesus. Jesus bridged the gap between two places. There's no more rituals, no more striving, no more trying to sacrifice to earn God's love. In fact, he became the sacrifice because of God's love. And that's who Jesus is. Earlier in one of the readings, we heard that God became flesh and he made his dwelling among us. God, Jesus, he became flesh like me and like you. He was born into the world and he made his dwelling amongst us. When we went into the first lockdown now, I, uh, it was my best friend's birthday. And I said to her, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock down with you. She didn't even have a choice, bless her. I just knew that I wanted to be in her house. I knew that it might not have been the easiest time. I knew it would also be quite a bit of fun. And I was like, if I'm gonna lock down, I'm gonna do it with you. Because where you dwell, where you spend your time is important. Jesus, he became flesh and he made his dwelling amongst us. He decided to actually hang out with us. He actively chose to come and spend time here. He made his dwelling among us. The Aramaic for that is he pitched his tent with us. I don't know if you guys have been to Focus or if you've been to a festival or you've been camping, but where you pitch your tent is actually really important. You wanna be near the good venues. You wanna be close, but not too close to the toilets. You wanna to be with good people that you can have fun with that don't go to bed too late. You wanna be around people that have the good camping equipment. Where you pitch your tent is important. Jesus, he made his dwelling amongst us. He pitched his tent with us. He actively said, this is a good place for me to be. I want to be here. And the reason for that is because he absolutely loves you. Regardless of who you are, regardless of what you've done, he actively decided to come into the world and pitch his tent, make his presence known to dwell amongst you. The God of the universe, the one whose vapor created the world, the one that designed the stars in the sky, that God decided to be born as a human and come into the world. That's how much he loves you. In the scripture earlier, we heard that those who embrace him and took hold of his name are given authority to be called children of God. In other words, the God of the universe, Jesus came into the world and he said, I wanna hang out with you, I wanna reside here. And if you choose me, you'll be given authority to be called children of God, to be adopted in the family, part of the crew. And family can be something that's a bit of a difficult concept. I know for me, I had a warped view of God when I was growing up. I heard that God was the father. And for me, I thought that meant that he was a really strict father that didn't want anything to do with me unless I was performing well. I was worried that God would reject me if I didn't do what he wanted. And so growing up, I just didn't think God would actually like me, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It's actually the opposite. The Bible actually says that when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. He actually wants to be near us. He wants to be part of our family, that he made his dwelling amongst us because he loves us. That's the God. That's the father heart of God for you. He actually wants to be with you. He actually loves you. He wants to draw near to you regardless of what your years look like, regardless of what your life has looked like. I know what it's like to be in darkness, but there is light in the darkness and his name is Jesus. I experienced my own darkness. I went through such an awful time a few years ago. I didn't think that God would want anything to do with me. I thought if only you knew what I'd done, if only you knew my shame, if only you knew the decisions I'd make. The truth is God already knows. The truth is God already knows the decisions. He already knows what goes on in our heads and he decides to love us anyway because there is light in the darkness. In my darkness, I felt God draw near to me. 
in my darkness, God rescued me and pretty much saved my life and corrected my steps. God loves you regardless of what you've done, regardless of the shame, regardless of the decisions you've made. You are loved and he wants to make his presence known to you, make his dwelling with you. He wants to pitch his tent next to you because he says you're a good decision. I know it's been a difficult year. I know that you might have experienced loss or heartache or anxiety or illness, or you've known someone that's struggled. I know it's been a hard year, but there is light in the darkness. And that doesn't negate from the difficulty that you've gone through, but it's a promise that there's hope and there's light and it actually burns brighter than what you've gone through. In fact, in that scripture, it says there is light in the darkness and the darkness hasn't overcome it. And another translation of that is it doesn't make sense. It's hard to understand. There is light in the darkness and it might not even make sense for you in the midst of what you're going through. That's what it felt like for me in my darkness. It doesn't even make sense that there's going to be light and hope because I don't think I'm worthy of it. But we are because God says that we're worthy of it. He says, I want to make my dwelling with you. So there is light and there's hope regardless of what you've gone through. You might feel far away from God. You might have never stepped foot in church before. You might have been in church your whole life and you think I know the rhythm, but this year has been really difficult and I'm disillusioned and disappointed. But there's light. Jesus is the bridge that connects us to the Father. He's the one that says, even if you never love me in return, I'll love you to death because that is the light in the darkness. You're loved because you're loved because you're loved. That's who Jesus is. In the Isaiah verse we heard earlier, we hear about it prophesying about the one who will make everything right with the world again. And it's talking about Jesus. It's prophesying about the one who would restore us back to God. He's described as comforter. He's described as counselor. He's described as peace. Another translation is there's no limit to the wholeness that he will bring. Maybe you've got a void in you. Maybe you feel like this year has taken from you and you need to be filled up again. The hope for you is that there's no limit to the wholeness that he has for you. There's no limit to his love. He is the bridge that connects you to the father and there's a seat at the table with your name on it. You can be adopted into the family and take it. There's no limit to the wholeness he brings. What do you need right now? What does your heart need right now? Maybe you just need to know that you're loved just as you are. Maybe you need to know that you're not alone. Maybe you need to know that there is light in the darkness and the darkness hasn't overcome it. It doesn't understand it. All of these promises are for you today. So wherever you are right now, you're loved, you're accepted, you're wanted. If you want Jesus, you're adopted into the family and you're not alone. Amen.
we want to give you an opportunity today to respond to all that we've heard, all that we've sung. And it may be that today you want to pray a prayer inviting this Jesus, the light of the world, into your heart. And I just want to encourage you to echo this prayer in your heart, wherever you are today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on a cross for me. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you that I can be set free. Please forgive me for the things that I've said or thought and done. Would you help me to live the life that you know deep down I long to live? And would you please fill me with your Holy Spirit, the one who comforts and guides. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you've got questions about the Christian faith, who is Jesus? Or big questions about life, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Then we would love to encourage you to come and do Alpha. Alpha starts at St. Mark's on the 18th of January. We're gonna be running courses in person and we're gonna be running courses online. For more details, check out the website. We would love you to join us. And now before our final carol, the blessing. Go in peace. The wisdom of the wonderful counselor guide you. The strength of the mighty God defend you. The love of the everlasting father enfold you. And the peace of the prince of peace be upon you. And the blessing of God almighty, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and this Christmas. Amen.
We've sung carols, heard stories, and all of that is good. But one more thing you should know, one thing to be understood is, although this service is through a screen, nothing has changed about the essence of what it all means. Above all else, what remains fervently true is there's a promise for me and there's a promise for you. There is light in the darkness and it burns fierce and bright. And with that promise, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night.